Lucky for us, Apple TV couldn't find a crashed A320 jet engine for their show Dear Edward. So we built them one. To start, we had to do a lot of research about the engines themselves. The shape of these engines is surprisingly complicated. There's really no symmetrical surface on them. The leading edge of the engine, this beautifully rounded, organically shaped cow, was one of the most important parts. If those curves didn't look right, it just would not read as a real engine. And of course, there was a lot of studying of plane crashes and plane crash debris. If you're trying to imitate something from life, especially like this, the only way to do it is to look at the real thing. There's little details there that just clue it into being real that you just would never be able to imagine. For the main structure of the engine, we layered up rigid foam insulation boards. I made an accurate drawing which I scaled up and then sliced and then projected each one of those templates onto the boards. We traced them, cut them out, and used a system of Roman numerals and letters to identify where each piece went in the glue up. Right now, it looks like a hot tub. Let's go make it look like an engine. As with all of these jobs, we're dealing with really tight time frames and limited budgets, so we're often just doing as much as we need to do to create the illusion, and these turbine blades were a good example of that. The real ones are enormously complex, they're heavily engineered, often they're very curved. For our purposes, we could get away with flat panels of Luan that I painted and made look silver, keeping in mind that all of this was going to get heavily distressed in the end. So for the engine components that were exposed, it was back to old school prop fabrication, you know, just finding plumbing parts and fixtures and tubes and hosing and things that we could modify to make look like what the real components looked like. To get the look of the damaged exterior just right, we needed to transition some of the areas from the sculpted foam to actual metal. To do this, we used big pieces of aluminum flashing which we painted and applied a very particular and careful method of distressing. Attaching these panels involved cutting into the foam and inserting the edge of the flashing into it. The flexible epoxy coating we had used on the body did a nice job of covering the scene. After all the finishing details were on, this would blend really nicely. Much of the final distressing was going to be left to the art department on set, but I can't let them have all the fun, so, you know, I added some mud, some bangs, and scratches and dents, just for good measure. Wow, so this thing was a highlight of our year for sure, and so much fun. I am beyond thrilled with how it turned out. And to top it off, we got amazing feedback from our client. They felt like we just went above and beyond. Um, and I feel the same way. Ready for the next one. <laughs>